All right, what is going on, people of YouTube and those watching live on Twitch? Uh, it's Belton here for the YouTube folks. Sorry, it's been a while. Uh, I know I haven't made a video uh, or a guide and information one in a while. Uh, today, thought I'd uh, make the first one of uh, <clears throat> Ancestor League here. Uh, I missed 10 days of the first 14 days of the league, so got a little bit of a late start, but catching up now, um, working on a couple of our first mirror crafts. And uh, in accordance with that, have uh, started to need to use Hinakora's locks. Um, so not wanting to waste currency within the league. Uh, <clears throat> in standard, I purchased quite a few locks to kind of figure out how they work. Uh, as well as I, I picked up about uh, 36 mirrors worth of Eternals. Uh, just to compare the two, try out all the different permutations and, and really figure out uh, how we can and cannot use them. And I thought I'd share that today. <clears throat> I have seen uh, you know some stuff on Reddit and some YouTube videos. Uh, showing them in a variety of methods, but not one that was really cutting to the chase uh, and showing it in different uh, in different ways because they are quite expensive. So hopefully uh, with, this will help. So anyways, uh, how Hinakora's locks work. All right. So uh, before using a currency ID, uh, sorry, before using a currency item or any applicable uh, modifying craft, uh, you simply apply the lock to the desired item. Uh, the item will get a lock icon added to it uh, with a slightly purple glow. While this is in place, you can right click uh, and hover over the lock with a variety of different currency items and see what their impact will be if you were to left click and apply it. Hovering over an item will, with the lock will not remove the lock or prevent any other currency types from being examined. The lock status retains itself until the item is modified in any way, at which point it will be removed. So you can see here, I set up a few uh, different uh, items at the end of uh, the slideshow here, which is only five slides. Uh, I'll go over more specifics. Um, but you can see here, the, each one of these has this little purple icon on the bottom. That's the lock, and it gets a slight glow. Uh, with respect to uh, the left click, right click thing, um, right clicking in Exalt gives you the little hovering icon here, right? Now, if you're to hover over this, we can see that uh, it's going to give us 46% um, faster start of energy shield recharge. Uh, let's say, for example, we decided we wanted to use a hunter's uh, or sorry a crusader's exalted orb instead you can see there five percent energy shield on kill so that's that's what i referred to there with the uh the, the stuff the only way for the lock to remove itself is for you to um either left click and apply the currency type that you want um or for you to remove the uh lock via any kind like the, the lock will remove itself by any kind of item augmentation or change whatsoever it does not only have to be the items that uh, uh show themselves with a forecast so the lock status is not only removed by applicable currency types um in essence the ones that it, it can forecast but by any modification of the item whatsoever uh the only caveat to uh locks is that they cannot be applied to corrupted items um, so which currency types or crafting methods will work with locks? The TLDR to this question uh, is that anything where you right click the augmenting item, so the augmenting item being, you know, the currency item uh, typically, but uh, it, it's not exclusively locked to currency items despite uh, the way that uh, Hinakura's locks are described. Um, things like uh, the temple uh, corruptions, the locus of corruption, uh, that is an augmenting item as well. Um, you know, fossils, essences, etc. So, um, yeah, any augmenting item where you right-click it, uh, drag your cursor over to the item being augmented, um, and then left-click to apply it. So, just again, to reiterate, with an exalt, for example, right-click. See, you get the hover, and then to apply an exalt, you left-click. Uh, the TLDR for what currency types work with the Hedacora's lock is that they apply that exact functionality. Um, the inverse or exclusionary way to see this uh, is that any crafting method or style that has its own user interface will not work. So bestiary, the crafting bench, the harvest bench, recombinators, etc., do not work because you do not hover or insert your item. Uh, in, uh, sorry, you do not hover uh, and click a currency item. You insert it into a user interface, choose an option, and press craft. This seems to be the only distinguishing factor between what works and what does not work with locks. Locus of Corruption, um, for example, is not a currency item, as I just mentioned, uh, but it does have that same functionality where you go there and you click uh, the right click the uh, little locus and then you hover over the item that you want to double corrupt and you left click. So despite the fact it is not a currency item, um, that basic functionality allows it to work with Enicora's locks. 
Um, and another example of this uh, is that recombinators, which are a currency item, they don't have that functionality, right? As I mentioned, anything that has its own user interface like this, right? Um, it does not work because you have to, when you use a recombinator, you put two items in there, right? And the items that you end up, uh, which are these are, I took a weapon recomb, that's why it's not working. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, the, the, the way that the uh, functionality works is that you click recombine, right? Similar with the crafting bench, right? Um, the crafting bench does not work because there is no process uh, sorry, I had the I forgot to move the slideshow there. Um, yeah, crafting bench uh, and recombinators are the same thing, right? The user it has its own user interface, right? It doesn't just simply work by you applying a currency item. It has its own functionality here, where in order to get the effect of the crafting bench, you pick a mod and you press replace, right? So you see, this doesn't give you a forecast of what the mod is. It just simply um, it applies it, right? However it would still remove the Hinakora's lock because you are augmenting the item, right? Now, again, the thing that's important is the right click, hover, and then left click functionality, right? So because the crafting bench, its own user interface, right? Uh, and again, despite the fact it is a currency item, uh, a recombinator, right? Does not work because it has its own user interface. Right, where you have to click recombine. All right, and that's the same reason why the order crafting station. So if you're doing a harvest augment reforge, this does not work because you have to press craft. That's the same reason bestiary doesn't work. Right now, you can do something with a fossil. Right, you do click. Right, um, crusaders exalted orbs, tailoring orbs, tempering orbs, uh, the exhaustive list. I'll, I'll go over quickly actually at the end as well. Um, but uh, it really does just boil down to that in terms of if you want a quick way to remember it. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, right-clicking and augmenting item, drag cursor, left-click targeted item function. Uh, the only exception to this, by the way, is uh, tainted currency. Tainted currency does have that same functionality, but because you can't use Hinakora's locks on corrupted items, and obviously tainted currency only works on corrupted items, they never have a they never have a potential to interact with one another. Um, you can apply a Hinakora's lock and then corrupt an item. However, because the item is then being modified after the lock being applied, uh, the the lock gets removed and it cannot be reapplied to a corrupted item. So that's the only exclusion or exemption to that uh, to that rule that I've I've been able to uh, find out. So here's a quick what I imagine will be frequently asked questions: um, Are the outcomes forecast by the lock? tied to the currency item that is hovered with, or is it tied to the lock? Um, and the answer to that is that they are tied to the lock. For example, if you use a lock and hover over with an exile and see the forecasted result of 55 life, you can augment the item in any way. So you can put on a bench craft or use a blessed orb, whatever, just to get rid of the lock. And then you can apply a new lock. If you hover over with an exalt again, you will have a different prefix uh, option forecasted for you, right? It, the, the, modifier that is demonstrated or that is shown by the Hinakora's lock is tied to the Hinakora's lock itself, not to that currency item. So that means that you can cycle locks over and over until you get your desired outcome. And this is a very important distinguishing factor. Um, and this is a very, very, uh, the implications of that in particular with ball orbs are, are quite high or double corruptions because with any other currency type, obviously you can augment it still afterwards, but ball orbs and, uh, Temple corrupts, especially temple corrupts, can they, they can either poof the item or they make it unmodifiable, right? So being able to just cycle locks and know deterministically what the outcome is going to be is incredibly valuable. Um, another uh, frequently asked question, uh, how does this impact mirror crafting? Uh, so since most mirror crafts are finished by either a harvest augment, a veiled modifier, or a bench craft, they aren't directly impacting uh, the completion of these items, uh, which is an important distinguishing factor between them and an eternal orb, right? As I mentioned uh, here, I did actually pick up uh, 12 Eternals for 36 mirrors just to test these out as well. An Eternal basically, um, it, it just works like an imprint does, except it can work on rare items, right? The exact same functionality as imprint, but works on rare items. Um, 
uh to do they can however um be used to annul away a bad ashling or augment and attempt to uh, do them right again sorry to attempt to do them again right away um the best use case for this uh, i can think of would be getting merciless and dictators which are t1 flat or t1 uh, fizz percent and t1 hybrid on something like a fizz bow um because this can take multiple mirrors uh doing it on the bow that i crafted last league the average cost was approximately eight mirrors to get you have merciless uh uh, imprinted uh, on the uh, as a prefix uh, as a magic item and then you would wriggle um, and try to get that second t1 prefix um, to get in order to get that being dictators just that set up the two t1 prefixes on average would cost me eight mirrors uh, per attempt last league right not to mention it takes an exorbitantly long amount of time especially because imprints can't be you can't uh, bull rush imprints with currency right you actually have to go down to the menagerie equip the rare beast and run the imprints and so any method of prefix crafting that requires you to use a large amount of those is going to have inherently a very, um, you know, arduous and strenuous time sink uh, element to it. Um, <clears throat> so, sorry. Uh, they can, however, be used to annul away bad Ashlings or Augments. Getting Merciless and Dictators uh, on a Fizbo, for example. Takes multiple mirrors and takes a lot of time to set up. The subsequent step being to craft multi-mod. Prefixes cannot be changed. Uh, you block Fizzleech, either Fizzleech is mana or is life. And then you would do add remove a physical mod with the harvest bench and attempt to hit flaring, which is T1 flat fizz. Uh, on average, this would take you 40 augments to hit that flaring, right? So that would mean in normal conditions prior to this league, you would have the eight mirror setup, right? Which takes, you know, hours and hours and hours to get on average. Um, and then you would have a one in 40 chance only of hitting the actual third T1 mod. Where Hinakora's locks have their best use case with respect to mirror crafting, uh, is in a situation like that, rather than having to rely on a 1 in 3 YOLO annul, uh, which can, you know, effectively save you, as I mentioned, 8 mirrors per, per annulment orb, uh, you can use a Hinochorus lock first, and then you can, uh, you can hover over with the annulment orb, right? So we see right here, for example, uh, this is a legacy, um, this is a legacy Vol Regalia I've got in standard with, with a lock on it. Um, if I hover over with the annulment orb here, we can see that it's going to get rid of the 139 199 it's getting rid of the hybrid uh es there right so obviously in that case what if i were to use an NL here what I'd, I'd probably be looking to get rid of would be the uh the fire risk so the uh you would want to switch that lock out uh similarly with the uh the prefixes on something like a fizzbo that that's a very good use case for it um now this isn't it, it, while this is incredibly powerful uh it's not as like game breaking as something like an eternal orb uh because eternals as i mentioned have the same functionality as an imprint does but for a rare item so with an eternal all you would need to do is just eternal augment eternal augment with the hinocora's locks uh because the annulment orb first of all you'd have to wipe your suffixes because you just want to have the three options for the annul as your prefix right so you have to do prefixes can be changed scour and then you have to apply the lock and then the Hinakora's lock, um, it doesn't, you have to reapply it again if you want a different outcome, right? So you still have a one in three chance to hit the uh, flaring, or sorry, to hit the low tier flat fizz that you want to remove so that you can attempt to get flaring again, which means that even though it's a one in 40, uh, you're still gonna require 100, 120 Hinakora's locks. And that's, you know, they're quite expensive. That's no small feat. It's astronomically cheaper than it was last league. Um, and it, the bigger impact, though, is the, the time value uh, that it would save. Uh, if you recall, last league, um, for, for me to, to craft the, uh, the the low thunder, you know, the best bow in the history of the game, it uh, it took like 31 calendar days and almost 300 hours of crafting. Uh, just recently today in, in the uh, Ancestor League, they were able to craft the same explicit modifiers, um, and it took them like three days, right? Because all you have to do is hit Dictators and Merciless once, and then you just have to get enough Hinochora's locks um, in order to be able to uh, uh, just annul the Hinochora's locks, annul, augment, annul, augment until you get the, the uh, setup again. So while you do save a lot of currency on average, um, what you save that is a, a much more valuable resource in that scenario is the time. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's the, I think it, for me, that's the biggest implication they have with uh, mirror, uh, mirror crafting. So uh, now I just want to uh, show you guys some demonstrations and some interesting use cases. 
Uh, as well, as I mentioned, I've got a uh, mirror craft going on in the league. So we're uh, we're actually going to go for that final stage craft because uh, I thought that'd be kind of an exciting way to close things off in a YouTube video. But uh, just to cover what I was talking about here with a variety of different currencies, uh, I applied Hinakora's locks to a bunch of different items. So we've got a 1200 ES Volregalia. We've got a double fractured quiver. Uh, we've got a seven, double seven uh, Ellie weakness on hit synth ring. We've got a four charge, four max charge uh, synth ring. And we've got a triple hatred watcher's eye. So we can see here that, um, you know, we, we already went over with uh, a divine orb, for example, that'll show you how that works. It works with tailoring orbs. So we get defense modifiers, resistant modifiers. Um, Crusader's Exalted Orb, it could show you that. One of the cool things is situations like this, where there's like so many different currency types you can use, right? Because the vault, the vault regalia that I have there, it's obviously a legacy one, right? So it doesn't have an influence or a synthesis or a fracture or anything like that. So I can do, you know, Eldritch Implicit, I I can, every different tier of the Eldritch Implicits, right? And I can hover it, and because we're not actually applying it, it doesn't use the lockup. Right, we can tr we can hover it over with each one of these uh, uh, conquerors exalted orbs. You know the tailorings, the temperings. As I mentioned, the distinguishing factor is the functionality. The right the right click, hover, left click. Um, vol orbs are also a very cool way to use them. Right, so you can see with this one, it's adding a white socket. Uh, with this one here, it looks like it's no effect. With here, it looks like no effect. Oh, right there, it looks like it's, it's it would give conductivity, level 23 conductivity skill. And with the Watcher's Eye, it would give area of effect. Um, so, yeah, that's how it works with different currency items. Uh, it does also work with ones that I haven't shown here. Again, the list is exhaustive. <clears throat> it does work with uh, uh, Orbs of Conflict, Eldritch Currency, although you would no reason to really do it with them. The only exception that I've been able to note was um, the, uh, as I mentioned, the Tainted Currency. Um, here's the list that I put together. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so let's zoom in here. Uh, does it work? Exalts, yes. Chaos, yes. Divines, yes. Vol orbs, yes. Beast crafts, no. Tainted currency, no. Fossils, yes. Essences, yes. Harvest crafts, no. Resonators, no. Bench crafting, no. Temple double corruptions, yes. Tailoring orbs, yes. Uh, tempering orbs, yes. Eldritch currency, yes. Conquerors, uh, Exalted Orbs, yes. Awakener Orbs, yes. Maven Orbs, yes. Ashling T4, no. Uh, mirrors, that's more of a meme, but yes, it also works with mirrors. Um, <clears throat> one of the things too, it does also work with, uh, sorry, I can't tell if it works or not with Ancient Orbs. Um, you know, I try to do it on the Watcher's Eye here. <clears throat> um, but, it, you know, because it can't, the only way it could hover, hovering and having it show something else would be for the 3D graphic to change. And it doesn't look like that. That's what happens there. Uh, so I can't confirm or deny whether or not that does work. It, it, potentially, it might on a different item base. I don't think it does, though. Uh, I did have to pay 300 divines per Hinakora's lock on standard. So uh, I, I, I am fairly uh, frivolous with my spending, but I don't want to be gratuitous. Now, um, as I mentioned, one of the cooler implications or cooler applications for these, I think, is with Vol Orbs or with Temple Corruptions. Um, and there are one of the things that I discovered, um, I actually knew this a while ago, but uh, this is one of the only times it's become practical to do this. Uh, if you're unaware, the anyone who plays Omni, Strength Stack, Dex Stack, Int Stack, the uh, Synthesis Implicits that are 6% Dex Strength and Int, these are not mutually exclusive with Vald Corruptions that can give percentage attributes because that is a hybrid mod, right? So if you look at something like um, the Mage Blood that I have right here, right? It's got 6% dex and 7% int, right? But that's actually only one modifier, which is six, which is four to six, four to six, right? Now, if you're to look at a synthesis implicit like this, where it's 6% dex and 6% int, because those are both independent mods, um, they don't actually conflict with one another, which means technically you could have a ring like this, right? My loathe nail ring, which is triple seven. If I were to put a gilded fossil on here, I could put a Gilded Fossil, and then I could use a Vol Orb, a Hinakora's Lock, Vol Orb, Hinakora's Lock, Vol Orb, and I could do that and hover over until the Vol Orb replaced the item cells for more to vendors, and it replaced it with the modifier uh, that is on this uh, Mage Blood right here, the 4 to 6, 4 to 6, right? So you could technically have um, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7. You get 35% um, 
35% uh, max attributes. Uh, to, for proof of that, guys, you can see I did it right here. Um, I bought a bunch of uh, uh, at least at least two implicit circles um, that had uh, you know either six percent dex into our strength, and you can see on this one here we hit uh, the synthesis attribute is six percent int, and the corruption is six percent dex and four percent int, and if you look at it there, um, the finished product is seven percent dex and eleven percent int, so that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so lots of different ways you can kind of figure that out and and. Uh, you know, put that into application. Um, I want to keep this video relatively short. We're at uh, 20 minutes now. So hopefully get this done in less than 25. So we're going back over to League now. And uh, we can, we're going to do a uh, final stage of a mirror craft here. Um, and uh, hopefully it works out. <clears throat> what we've got here is a deck stacking synth bow. I've uh, spent quite a bit of, uh, quite a bit of moolah on. And uh, what we've got here, you can see we've got uh, tier one attack speed implicit plus one frenzy charge. Two to four cold damage per ten decks on a spine bow base. Uh, I put um, essence tier. Uh, well, there's only one tier of it because it only comes from an essence. But sixteen percent cold res, sixteen percent elemental res, and then tier one cold damage. And you can also see I've hit the plus two arrow on our suffix. So what we're looking for here as our last two modifiers are attack speed and crit chance. Uh, ideally, we want a T one of the the attack speed. We're going to be bench crafting the crit chance. But, um, you know, there's no way to know for that for sure. Um, if we hit, right now there's a 50-50 chance that the uh, augment or the add remove will uh, get rid of the plus two arrow, in which case ah, the video is over. Uh, if it doesn't, though, and it removes prefixes cannot be changed. Um, if it hits attack speed, great, we're done. Uh, but if it hits prod speed, what we can then do uh, is use a Hinakora's lock, and I can show you in a real situation how that would work. Fuck me, it got rid of the plus two arrow. And we hit the attack speed, but unfortunately, uh, that wouldn't work there. Um, so, that's too bad, but uh, I'll keep you guys updated on the community section of the YouTube with uh, how that craft goes. And uh, hopefully that was uh, informative. And if you have any questions, let me know. All right, thanks a lot, guys. Take care.